Let's look at an analysis of variance, or ANOVA. It bases itself on the total variation, total meaning sum, of the sample that's explainable from the treatment between the groups, and that which is unexplainable, considered an error, because it comes from within the group. The chart that develops looks like this. Some of the squares of the treatments, degrees of freedom, which is determined by k, number of groups, minus 1. Our mean square would be the sum of the squares of the treatment divided by this k minus 1. Then when we go to the unexplainable, it's the sum of the squares of the errors divided by n, sample size, minus k, number of groups, and that also gives us a ratio. I put the two ratios together for my mean square of treatment divided by the mean square of the error. In other words, what's explainable divided by what's unexplained. The F is a value that converts to a critical value, and hence we can look for statistical significance. Or we could go for the p-values. If p is less than alpha, we reject the null. Here's an example. We have researchers studying the effect of vitamin C on the common cold. They grouped three different groups together, one taking 1,000 milligrams, the second group taking 500 milligrams, and three, the group took no vitamin C. They were followed for a year. The number of colds was recorded per participant. When we run the ANOVA test, we'll have to fill out our table. The total variation would be variation in treatment plus the variation in the error. So our SSE must be 2.8576. Degrees of freedom, the total is the degrees of freedom for the treatment plus the degrees of freedom for the error. So our degrees of freedom for error must be 30. Our mean squares, for the treatment it's already there, but for our error we'll have to take the sum of the squares of the error divided by the, the degrees of freedom of error for the ratio and the number of 1.6401. Finally, divide these two numbers together to get the F value. 0.8712. This converts into a critical value of 3.3. 158 and a p-value of 0.4288. What would our hypothesis test look like? The null would say all those means are equal. The group who took a thousand, the group who took 500, and the group who took none. The alternative or research hypothesis would say, no, nope, at least one of them is different. We are setting alpha at 0.05. But when we compute that, we get 0.4288. We know that if a p-value is greater than alpha, we do not have significance. But let's continue for the sake of argument. If we don't have p greater than alpha, we fail to reject. We don't have enough information at this point to say that the means are different. One of the things that's important to remember is this tells you if the means are different, but not which one is different from the others, or by how much. Another example. A realtor is comparing the prices of one-family houses in three cities. After randomly selecting the one-family houses in the three cities and determining the price for each, the realtor organizes the prices in thousands of dollars in a table. At alpha equals 0.05, can the realtor reject the claim that the mean price is the same for all three cities? We'll take that claim and let's make some hypotheses to start our test. So we could say either the means for all the regions are equal, mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3 from a symbolic standpoint, and then, our research hypothesis, at least one of the means differs. If we're going to let alpha equal 0.05, then we need 
a probability value to compare to. So in regular Excel, data to data analysis to ANOVA single factor. Drag onto your data. Make sure alpha is correct and click OK. And there's our data. We could do the chart method for finding statistical significance. We could do the critical value where we map it out on the bell curve. But since we already have alpha, it's a probability, let's compare it to the probability that we just found, 0 0.02. So we would say, is P less than alpha? Yes, P is less than alpha. And therefore, yes, at least one of the means is statistically significantly different than the others for the mean prices of the cities. If you're only working in Excel, you're done. That's as much as you can do. If you have Megastat, add-ins, Megastat, analysis of variance, one-factor ANOVA, drag on your data, and click OK. What I see here is the same p-value for the original ANOVA table, does the data fit, but this gives me what's called a post hoc analysis, and it's comparing the cities by pairs. So when we compare city C to city B, that is not statistically significant. City A compared to city B is statistically significant. City A to C, just a little bit over the probability value. So what I can say is A is definitely bigger than B, and I'm looking at the means to get that decision. But I can't see anything about B versus C being different, though 93 is definitely different than 107. They're not far enough apart to say that they would be different in the population. In inferential statistics, we're trying to infer from our sample to the population. So I would list these out in my post hoc analysis, looking at the means with their associated cities. I know that A is definitely bigger than C. It was statistically significantly bigger with 0 .0077, again comparing to the alpha of 0.05. But I can't say the same about city C to city B. They just weren't far enough apart to say they would be different in the population. In a recent study, a health insurance company investigated the number of days spent at a hospital. The company randomly selected patients from various parts of the USA and recorded the number of days spent at the hospital. At alpha equals 0.05, can the company reject the claim that the number of days patients spent in the hospital is the same for all regions? First, we'll need some hypotheses. As in all ANOVA tests, the means are equal, is our null, because the null always has the equals and H1, at least one of them is different. We'll need our good friend Excel here to go get some data in data analysis, ANOVA. Click on your data, watch your alpha values, and click OK. Here I have a critical value of 2.93 if we want to use the critical value method. Or, I could go for the easier of the two, the p-value. Since my question is always, is p less than alpha, when I substitute the values in, is 0 .06589 less than 0 .01? Yes, it is. So my conclusion, at least one of the means is statistically, statist statistically significantly different from the others. But at this point, I don't know which one. If you're in regular Excel, you're done. You can only say they're different. If you have Megastat, you can go find out which ones. Go to Add-ins and Megastat, Analysis of Variance, One Factor ANOVA. You're doing what's called a post hoc analysis. My data is the same. 
but I can go down a little bit further and find out do they differ from one another. My post hoc test right here compares the west to the south, not significant. Midwest to south, 0.19, not significant. Northeast to south, there I do have significance. Going to the next column, Midwest to west, not significant. Northeast to west is significant. Northeast to midwest is significant at the less than 0 0.05, but not less than 0 0.01. So if I had to rank those, I would use the significant values to separate, and then I would look at the means to accommodate. Here's what I'm talking about. I can rank these in order by the mean sizes. Northeast is 7.4, Midwest is 5.8, the West is 5.0, and the South is 4.7. So that's a rank order. But what we found is though these differ a little bit in the sample, they're not far enough away from each other to say they differ in the population, with the exception of the Northeast being statistically significantly higher than the others. And I got that from right here. So when we rank them, I'm saying the Northeast is greater than the Midwest, but the Midwest, the West, and the South are equal in a population as far as I can tell right now. The Northeast is statistically significantly higher than the Midwest. The Northeast is statistically significantly higher than the West. The Northeast is statistically significantly higher than the South. But the Midwest, West, and South are not different from each other.